Dun da 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 Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, grab your popcorn, grab your M&Ms, grab your gluten-free Lay's. It's time to talk about N-Series. Oh my gosh, what has this series been? And yes, we're back to the original filming format for this video because this is a special occasion. Hasbro is doing something that I cannot believe even to this day, and I have no idea how it's going to pan out. Well, actually, I have a few theories, but we'll get back to that in a moment. We need to talk about N-Series, the biggest deal of a thing that Hasbro has done since the original creation of N-Strike Elite. Everyone had basically the same reaction. Everyone pretty much just said, Oh my goodness, it's Ultra 2.0. This is Ultra 2.0, it's going to pan out well. Look at this, it's going to be Ultra 2.0, it's going to be in a proprietary MO type, and then they're going to just continue it after a year. Nope. This is the standard now. From now on, you are going to be getting these darts instead of elite darts. Gone are the days of having elite darts. Gone are the days of getting so many elite darts in a blaster that always end up sitting out a bin that you never use because you're too busy using darts on waffle heads. Or if you're a Chad, Zuru Insanity darts. Nope, from now on, you're gonna be getting these sexy corn dogs. And this has most of the Nerf community pissed. <laughs> Rightfully so, because people have been using elite darts since like the advent of N-Strike. N-Strike came out in 2003, it is 2024. That is 20 solid years of N-Strike elite darts. First, the streamlines that evolved into elite darts, vice versa, they were all cross compatible with each other, except you can't really use the streamlines and springers, but it doesn't matter. And all of a sudden, after 20 years of a standardized ammo type, Hasbro says, no, thank you, please use these now. Why do these two darts look so different? What the heck? Like, I only just noticed that some of these darts have a noticeable tan line and it's hilarious, but they don't seem to affect the performance or anything, so why should I care? The answer is I don't. My take on this matter is it's completely fine because elite darts are starting to get phased out by every company anyways. Dart Zone is doing more half-length stuff. Zuru is doing half-length stuff now. Even Busby seems like they're starting to low down their take on blasters and they're starting to put more effort into a professional thing in the future that everyone's skeptical about. Even Nerf has thrown their hat into the mix, as we saw with the Strife X moving over to half darts. And so with less and less blasters coming out that use elite darts, it seems like this was inevitable. Now it's highly debate on whether or not this was the right time to do something like this, or whether this should be pushed further into the future back when, like, nothing was full length and this was inevitable, but I'm not even gonna say anything about that because I don't really have an opinion on it right now. I'm just here to judge these darts, compare these to elite darts, compare these to my favorite darts ever, the Zuru Insanities, and judge each individual blaster released in N-Series up to this point. Let's get into it. I'm gonna get the dart portion out of the way quickly because I need a lot of blasters to talk about, so I'm just gonna skim through this. First, durability. These darts are made incredibly well. The foam that they're using is very similar to the same thing that Elite darts use, but it seems thicker and it seems more robust. Not to mention the dart heads are completely solid and they sink into the body of the dart completely solid and it's glued in really well. I don't think these darts are gonna decap anytime soon. They might not decap Ever. I mean, these are darts that could very much stay intact forever. Even the nub bit on the back is held in extraordinarily well. It feels like one solid piece of foam, and unless you knew any better, you wouldn't know that it's actually two different tubes of foam that have been glued into one another. Incredibly well done on the durability and quality on these darts. Let's talk the velocity out of these darts. Actually, no, we'll save that until when we get to the blaster portion, because the velocity has nothing to do with the darts, just the blaster. Let's talk about how accurate these darts Darts are. The answer is they are very accurate. These darts actually travel really, really straight most of the time out of most blasters that they're compatible with. Yeah, I hate to burst your bubble, but these darts don't always travel straight. But to be fair, that doesn't really have anything to do with the darts because the darts do travel straight. I have seen these darts, like every single dart out of specific blasters, travel in laser beam level precision for an extraordinarily long time. They even fight back against winds and manage to maintain perfectly straight lines, even in super windy environments. Even half-length darts can't do that. Even half-length darts veer in strong wind. And I think that is because of how these darts are balanced. They are pretty heavy, especially 
especially for their size. They're very heavy darts, especially compared to like elite darts or something like that. The front ends are made of solid rubber. It's not that kind of plasticky rubber that Nerf darts are usually known for having the tips made of. This is a solid rubber dart head, completely solid. There are no air release holes. There's no compression or anything. It's a heavy tipped dart, but it is balanced in the back by this extension of foam that makes up the little nub sticking out of the back. The foam only goes to about here before it stops. So everything in between my thumb and index finger is completely hollow and you can feel that. It's squishier in the middle than it is at the back or at the front. And that gives it a sort of equal balance from the front and the back while having dead space in the front or in the middle. Here is a real world application of this principle. Say I have this dumbbell right here with the weights pushed as closely to the middle as possible and I have my two palms supporting it right in the center. Notice how easily it wants to tip from one side to the other, especially when I am propelling it at a high speed. It constantly wants to tip over and it's really hard to keep it balanced. If I simply move the dumbbells further away from the center, it becomes much easier to keep it balanced. Even when I move side to side like this, you'll notice that it's very easily staying balanced. I'm not applying any extra force on the dumbbells. I'm simply holding them directly in the center and they are maintaining perfect central mass right here. It's not really tipping over unless I actively change the center of mass, even when I move it around and spin it just like I did with the other one. It's still staying very straight. And that is why it works. At least I think that's why it works. Due to my monkey brain zero understanding of physics, I don't want anyone watching this video to take that as an objective fact. That is simply my theory as to why these darts are so stable even in strong winds, because they're better balanced and as such better sustained. But enough about the darts, let's talk about the blasters. And I'm gonna be talking about each one from my least favorite to my most favorite. This isn't really that much of a ranking, but still my least favorite blaster is the Dealer, the tactical jolt, the one that everyone wanted. This blaster is everything wrong with N-Series altogether. This thing has really, really cheap plastic. The grip is okay. The trigger pull sucks though. The T-pull is mid. The stock attachment point is unusable and the top rail just feels forced and it's too far forward. Plus the proportions of the blaster are lopsided in ways that you can't get around having this part tilted up. So when you look forward, it's like tilted down. It's just a hot mess altogether and I don't like it at all. Then there is the pinpoint. This was meant to be the magazine fed bolt action primary of the series aka the new retaliator aka the new long shot but this blaster fails in a lot of different ways the plastic quality is really inconsistent going from the front to the back and then the whole middle of it is really thin while the front and the back is really thick it's really weird the magazine style is really cool but it is proprietary though that won't last very long since there are already more blasters being made that use this exact same type of magazine so i'm not going to dock it points for having a proprietary mag. The trigger feels good, the grip feels good, the mag release feels good, but everything else about it is just kind of mid. Next we have the Wielder. This is a stock attachment point enabled bolt action revolver pistol. And there really isn't anything else like this unless you count the eagle point, but I don't really count the eagle point due to the fact that that blaster is kind of a big primary. This one is meant to be a sidearm and this one does its job very, very well. It's comfortable, it's good looking, the plastic feels very thick and it's it's overall just a nice little blaster. Then we get to the Ward, the first blaster that I ever got, which is kind of the new Night Finder. It's definitely bigger than something like a Jolt. It's ring pull enabled and it has a two shot Smart AR mechanism, making it the only Smart AR blaster available in the series. Though for some reason, there are two identical reskins of this blaster. One of them looking exactly like this, but like with a little thing that goes right here, like the, the dealer has. And the other one having a weird stock thing, wrist brace, whatever you want to call it. Both of those are completely Completely useless so I never bought either of them but this blaster is relatively okay and for five dollars it's not bad at all next up was the flex a very highly anticipated release due to the fact that this is the basic replacement for the jolt and this one I think is better than the jolt it's really really comfortable it looks absolutely amazing in person I love the way it feels I love the way it works it's a better version of the dealer all in all and it shoots really hard the runner-up for my favorite blaster in this series is the agility I absolutely love this thing to death. It may not be made as good as something like the Wielder or the Flex, but it is still incredibly fun. It's comfortable. God, it looks so good. And it is just an absolute blast to play with. If I were to pick up a blaster to play with today, this is the one I would want to pick up.
Do I even need to say which one the best one is? It's the Infinite. This thing is so cool in every single way. I basically have no complaints with it other than the one trigger lock that you have to remove after you first get the blaster. Once you do that, this thing's freaking amazing, man. It's made well, it looks well, it's comfortable as heck. It shoots well, it performs well, it's relatively accurate. It's got an innovative mechanism. The mag chain thing is just the coolest thing ever. Let's talk about the good things and the bad things with these blasters before I wrap this this video up. First of all, the good things. They're very cheap. The Infinite being the best blaster and the biggest one overall, you would expect to be about like 60 to $70. Nope, it's 40. That's it. Every other blaster is cheaper than the Infinite in some regard. The Sprinter, which hasn't really come out yet, is $35. Uh, the Pinpoint is $20. All the other blasters are like $15, $10, $5. They're rivaling end strike prices, and most of the time, they're delivering really good quality for your dollar. The value is there for almost every single blaster that you get from end series. You never feel ripped off when you get an end series blaster because they're all really cheap and really affordable, and they give you value for your buck. The ergonomics of these blasters is also really good. They all use the same universal style grip design, and the grip that they've come up with for N-Series is so good. It's as comfortable as the original Elite Grip or even the late-gen N-Strike Grip, in my opinion. It's a really, really good design grip, and I have no complaints with the grip on any of the N-Series blasters except maybe the Flex, but they did change the grip design on that because the plunger tube is inside of it, so I'll give them a pass there. A bit of a subjective thing that I like is the design of most of these blasters and the color scheme that they've generally picked out for N-Series, being a sort of variation on the original Elite style colors and Elite XD colors of blue, white, and orange, while original Elite Blue focused on the blue and Elite XD focused on the white with alternating the white and the blue as just details and then having orange accents, the N-Series blaster blasters have a very even balance of blue and white, and then throw a lot of orange in there too just to spruce it up a little bit. The Infinite is my favorite example again. And finally, the FPS out of these blasters is unbelievably good. They bumped the FPS from 70 and mid 60s all the way up to 85 to 90. I can't believe that happened. All blasters now that are being released, even weird stuff in the Minecraft series, is coming out and shooting 90 FPS. That is awesome, and I don't mind they changed the darts because of that. But now we have to talk about the bad with N-Series, because unfortunately, no, it's not all sunshine and rainbows. Moving aside the fact that these are still a proprietary dart that only Nerf is making, so these darts won't fit into any blasters that Dart Zone is coming out with, Zuru is coming out with, or any other company, but we have to talk about the inconsistency problems. Ignore the physical size difference between these blasters. Obviously, the Infinite is bigger, but moving aside the part where there are just random blasters that have this lime green color scheme for seemingly no reason at all when all the other ones keep the blue white and orange color scheme we're gonna ignore that let's take a look at the inconsistency in plastic quality so as you can see the infinite here is made really good this thing is rock solid front to back it's made with end strike style plastic quality the pump grip the white parts of the plastic the blue parts of plastic the orange part right here even the trigger feels good it's all metal springs it feels fantastic in the hand like it is a really nicely made blaster while the dealer here feels like an alpha strike blaster it is incredibly thin very very thin very very plasticky all over it the orange part up here is super thin and creaky all over this thing it feels like crap this is a plastic spring i mean it's understandable because it's a jolt style but it's still a plastic spring it does not feel good in the hand. This blaster feels like you can't trust it and then it's gonna fall apart. You would not expect these, you wouldn't expect these two blasters to be released side by side from the same series in the same launch year. Every single blaster feels different. No two N-Series blasters feel exactly the same. The absolute worst offender is the pinpoint. Going back to this thing again, not because it's bad, but because throughout the blaster, it is inconsistent. As you can see, the whole barrel up here, this piece, you can see there's a line here, this is a separate piece. This thing 
feels like the infinite. Like this part right here feels super good. The rest of the blaster feels different than the front end of it. The barrel feels like the infinite. This feels more like a late gen elite blaster. Or like the blue specifically feels like a late gen elite blaster. The white feels like an early gen elite blaster. And all of this orange feels like an elite 2.0 blaster. What? There's no rhyme or reason to any of it. You could get one blaster and have it feel extraordinarily good, and then a blaster sitting right next to it on the shelf, made by the same company in the same brand from the same launch year, will feel abysmal like an Alpha Strike product. And there's no consistency to it whatsoever. I have literally no reference point or clue as to what the Sprinter, the Shadow Storm, or the Strike Back are going to feel like in my hands, because with a sample size of seven blasters, there's been no consistency in the plastic! This had me scared for the sender and the torrent. I don't have the torrent yet, but I do have the sender, and luckily this thing feels amazing. It doesn't feel like crap, but I don't know how the torrent is gonna feel. I really hope that the trend of having inconsistent plastic does not continue. I am praying to God that the Sprinter, the Strike Back, and the, the Shadow Storm, whatever that thing is called, all three of those have some form of consistency or at the very least can be as consistent as one of the other blasters that I have already acquired up to this point. But if I know anything about N-Series up to this point, all three of those are not only going to feel different from each other, but are going to be different from all the ones that I already have. It's one thing to have bad plastic quality, but it's another thing to not be able to make up your mind about the plastic quality. I would genuinely prefer if every single blaster felt like crap, like the Elite 2.0 blasters did, rather than having one or two blasters feel good, one or two blasters feel terrible, and a whole bunch of blasters randomly in a gray area in between where no two line up. Some might feel good, some might not, and you have no way of knowing that until you get it. So with all my innate ramblings out of the way, what do I think of N-Series? I don't know. I think that the series is honestly on a good path, and I do like the N1 darts. I think that these darts are genuinely a superior design to full-length darts, and I hope that Dart Zone and Zuru and Busby are able to use these darts further on down the line, and they make good blasters utilizing them, because good heavens, these darts are fun to use, and they work very well. The series, on the other hand, is all over the place, and I can't form a solid opinion on it right now, because there are just so many uncertainties, even after I've gotten my hand on most of the launch blasters that have come out. They're all so different. Some things about them are really good, but some things about them are really bad and can't be ignored, like the inconsistency in plastic quality and how some blasters have plastic trigger springs while other ones have metal trigger springs. But considering these blasters are so cheap, are shooting 90 FPS, and are out of the box shooting more accurately than any other nerf blaster shooting stock nerf darts that we've seen, the durability of the darts, and the comfort of the blasters, and everything really taken in consideration, I do think that the good parts of N-Series outweigh the bad parts. So I'm going to take a risk here, and I'm going to give this series a 70% on my list. Please take into consideration that I gave Ultra a 5% on my personal list, and I gave N-Strike Elite a 95% and Modulus a 100%. So this being 70% puts it towards the better end of things. So with all that said, that is my opinion on N-Series and the N1 darts up to this point. Thank you for watching. Bye.